Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore, with music by Claude Sweet. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. If you're one of the millions of American families who daily enjoy parquet margarine as a spread for bread, you've probably been telling your friends about it. Telling them how good parquet tastes. Telling them about parquet's fine, fresh flavor. Yes, the good word about good food gets around mighty fast these days. And believe me, your friends really appreciate hearing about it. Once they enjoy parquet margarine's fresh, delicate flavor, once they find out how good it tastes, we're sure they too will make parquet their favorite spread for bread. Remember, parquet is economical, saves both money and ration points. It's a top-notch energy food. And Kraft guarantees every single pound of parquet to contain 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So buy and tell your friends to buy this nourishing spread that tastes so good. Ask for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. journey on to Summerfield and the Great Gildersleeve. The years at the spring and days at the morn. Mornings at seven, the hillsides do pearled. The lark's on the wing, the snail's on the thorn. And Uncle Slotmorton, where is he? Flat on his back and sound asleep. <laughs> but he won't be long because just listen to what's going on across the street. <laughs> Leroy. I know it. There he is now. Leroy, Tom I guess he wants me. What is it, Unc? Stop that confounded racket. How can a man sleep? I'm not making any racket, Unc. It's across the street. Huh? The old Bullard house. They've got carpenters over there. The Bullard house? It's all boarded up. Not now it isn't. But there hasn't been anybody in there for four years, Leroy. Not since the Hansons moved. You don't believe me? Come here and look out the window. There's a fellow on the roof carrying off singles. By George, I wonder if somebody's bought the place. The sales meeting! Oh, my goodness. Breakfast and I'm not even dressed. Dressed? You're not even up. Mr. Gilsby, our breakfast is ready, and guess what? There's people moving in across the street. Not so loud, Bertie. They'll hear you. There's people moving in, and that ain't all. They backed a great big lumber truck out their driveway and backed it right off of your lawn. What? It's a mess, Mr. Gilsby, a plain mess. Oh, let me out of this bed, Leroy. Who's holding you? I'll sue him, so help me, I'll sue him. You mark my words, Leroy. I'll sue him, but the last thing I do... But the first thing I'll do is have breakfast. Where's my breakfast? Where is everybody? Where's Marjorie? She's across the street. Across the... What's going on here? Hey, there's a moving van. You see, Bertie's talking to the driver. I won't have it. Go to the door, Leroy, and call him. Okay. Making a spectacle of the entire family. Hey, Lord! <whistles> Bernie! I'll walk you! Hobnobbing with truck drivers. He says, keep away from that truck driver! <laughs> Leroy, don't shout things like that. Ye gods. Come on back here and finish your milk. I finished it. I mean, I don't want any. Finish your milk. I didn't know you was downstairs. Well, I am downstairs, and I'd like my breakfast. Yes, sir. What would you like, Mr. Gilsey? We've got grapefruit. It, well, in that case, I guess I'll have grapefruit. <laughs> yes, sir. Luckily, we got it. I'll bring it right in. Where is Marjorie? Oh. Good morning, Unky darling. What's the matter? You're in for it. Unk's got something he wants to say to you, haven't you, Unk? In my own good time, Leroy. What's wrong? Sit down, my dear. I want to have an understanding here. This concerns you too, Bertie. Yes, sir. Now, about those people across the street. I found out all about them, Uncle Mort. They're moving in this afternoon. There's a man and his wife and a boy and a girl. Hey, no kidding? A girl for you and a boy for me. Swell. 
The boy is my age. Oh. The girl is 11. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's what I wanted to speak to you two about. We've got to be careful about these people. They're strangers. But, Uncle Mort, they're people. Gee, it'll be so wonderful to have somebody new around for a change. But, my dear, we know nothing about these people. We haven't seen them. We don't know where they come from. I know, Mr. Gilsleeve. I was talking to the man on the truck. Oh? Well, where do they come from, Bertie? I don't know about them, but he comes from Newark, New Jersey. (laughs) Oh, Easterners, eh? Yes, sir, but he seems real nice. He drove all the way out here. It took him two days and two nights. Yes, He would have made it sooner, only the van broke down. Something wrong with a baron or something, he said. I don't know. Tell him up six hours. Yes, well, about the... He's got a brother in Boonville, Kentucky. Sells hardware. We're primarily interested in the family, Bertie. The man on the van will be going back as soon as they get it unloaded. Oh, yes. I don't know nothing about the family. (laughs) Well, we're not particularly interested in them either. Except if I ever find out who the man is, I'll sue him. Sue him? Yes, for what his lumber truck did to my lawn. Backed right up on it. The man obviously has no regard for property. Now, Uncle Mort, it wasn't his fault. He wasn't driving the truck. He may be very nice. Probably some shyster who bought the place for peanuts. (laughs) Run down anyway. Wouldn't surprise me if they took in boarders. By George, I'd like to see him try. Really, Uncle Mort? I'm not going to have my property depreciated by people taking in boarders. There's such a thing as restrictions, you know. Yeah, that's why we had to get rid of our pig. Yeah. (laughs) Well, this is different. Now, when the Bullards owned that place, I understand they really kept it up. Then the Bullards really were somebody. These people. Don't even know how to back a truck. I want you to keep away from them, all of you. Now, let me catch you hanging around over there, you understand? And keep away from their borders. Mr. Gilsey, have you gone downtown today? Huh? Uh, Downtown? Oh, well, I may and I may not. What you watching, Mr. Gilsey? Something new going on over there? Oh, I wasn't watching across the street particularly, Bertie. Just looking out the window and wondering about the weather. Yeah, that's it. Say, there goes another sofa. But the third one they've unloaded. The first two was love seats. Well, even so, a sofa and two love seats. That's nothing. The man told me they got a whole nother van coming. Say, two van loads? That's a lot of furniture, Bertie. You don't suppose they're going to open a swap shop? (laughs) You anybody home? That's Miss Ransom. Must be at the back door. In here, Leela, in the living room. Well, I can't be standing here all day gawking at the neighbors. I got work to do. Morning, Miss Ransom. Good morning, Betty. I came across the back way, so I just walked in the kitchen door. Hope you don't mind. Not at all. Ice man and the laundry man, they do the same. It's open house here all the time. Well, thank you. Uh, Hello, Throckmorton. Good morning, Leela. I was just... I know. You don't need to tell me. That's why I ran over. Isn't it exciting? Who are they, do you know? I wonder what they paid for it. Not much, I suppose. The place hasn't been lived in for so long. Well, I really don't know. I suppose I ought to go and call on them, but I thought I'd give them a day to get settled first. Who did you say they were? I didn't say. I don't know. Oh. All I know is the man has two children, a boy and a girl. Oh, he has a wife, then. Naturally, I suppose so. (laughs) I mean, she's living? As far as I know. And they're living together? (laughs) I really couldn't say, Leela. I don't know anything about them. Well, I suppose I might just leave a calling card. Except that nobody seems to understand about calling cards up north here. I left a card once and the gentleman called up and made advances to me. Huh? Huh? He wanted me to have dinner with him when we hadn't even been introduced. Turned out to be a very dull dinner, too. (laughs) Go on, Dad! I'll I'll go, Bertie. (laughs) Excuse me, Leela. Now, who could that be so early in the morning? You don't suppose it's the people from across the street? Oh, Mrs. Gildersleeve. Peavy. (laughs) Well, come on in. Well, I I want to tell you, Mr. Gildersleeve, I just happened to be passing by, and I... Oh, good morning, Miss Ransom. Good morning, Mr. Peavy. How's Mrs. Peavy? Oh, she's just fine. Well, that is, she's 
All right. She, she's not as sick as she thinks she is. <laughs> I uh, just happened to be passing on my way to the shop, Mr. Gillespie, and I said to myself, I'll just drop in and see if there's anything Mr. Gillespie needs in the pharmaceutical line. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Peavy, but I don't quite understand. There's nothing I need that I know of. There's not. Well, I just thought I'd inquire, as I say. I just happened to be passing, and I said to myself, I'll just drop in and... Who's your new neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's it. Well, I saw the van across the street. I there. don't know him from Adam, Peavy. I don't approve at all of what they're doing to the house, Mr. Peavy. Do you? I think they're just ruining it. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> new roof never hurt anybody. Chopping off all that lovely old fancy work, I mean. Oh, but then perhaps I'm old-fashioned. We love the old things down south. Well, I'll admit I'm a little conservative myself when it comes to architecture. Wife's been trying to get me to repaper the front hall for the last ten years. <laughs> but I say, let's get used to the paper we got first. <laughs> I, I just hope those people aren't going to paint their house some hideous color, that's all. Well, if they do, by George Lee, I'll pull down all my front shades and use the back door. As it is, I've given the children orders not to go near the place. I heard it. Well, I must be going. Oh, it's you, Judge. Come in. Thank you. What is this? Well, Leela. Good morning, Judge. And Peavy. Quite a little gathering. Here ye, here ye, Superior Court of 15th District Town Session. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into you, Peavy. You know, just a little joke. <laughs> <laughs> Gildy, I see you have a new neighbor. You're not the first to discover it, Judge. Know who he is? No, but when I find out, I'm going to sue him. Sue him? For what? The man deliberately backed a lumber truck on my lawn between 7 and 7.15 this morning. Oh, nonsense. Cut it to ribbons. They tell me I haven't gone out to look at it yet. <laughs> well, forget it, Gildy, forget it. You know who's bought the place? Rumson Bullard. Bullard? Is he one of the Bullards who owned the place originally? The eldest son. Yes, sir, he bought the old family estate... Coming back here to retire. Rumson Bullard. Rumson Bullard. What kind of a name is that? What's the matter with it? Bullard's a good name. Always was. Rumson Bullard. I don't trust any man with a fancy first name like Rumson. Give me a man with a good, honest name like Fred or George. Oh, Throckmorton. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you old goat. There are exceptions. What did this guy Bullard ever do that makes him so great? Went to New York and made himself a cool million, that's all. Huh? A million dollars, you say? Well, something like that. hundred thousand, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Enough to come back here and retire on. You don't say. A million dollars. That's more than I make in a year. <laughs> he would have to be married. And he's going to live right across the street from me. Ha! <laughs> you fellas better be nice to me. Still thinking of suing him, Gildy? Yeah, go on, you old goat. <laughs> Come along, Peavy. We'd better be getting downtown. Coming, Leela? Oh, I guess I'd better. Maybe I'll just leave a card there after all. Will we be seeing you at the Jolly Boys tonight, Gildy? Uh, I'm afraid not, Judge. I'm afraid not. <laughs> well, what do you know? Hee hee, right across the street, too. Rumps and Bullard. By George, he can drive up on my lawn any time. Oh, Bertie. Yes, sir? You holler, Uncle. I was calling Bertie, Leroy. Bertie, what's for dinner this evening? Well, I was thinking about lamb stew, Mr. Gillsleeve. Forget it, Bertie. Get a steak. Steak? With all them points? Yeah. We may very likely be having company for dinner this evening. Company? Who? Our new neighbors. Who do you think? You mean them people across the street? Certainly. After a hard day's moving, a good hearty dinner with some friendly neighbors would probably be welcome. I've said it before and I'll say it again. What a character. The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. Have you been on the go lately, working long hours and working extra hard at home or on the job? Well, if that's the case, you're using up extra energy. And a mighty good way to replenish some of that energy, yes, and a mighty pleasant way, too, is to spread bread, toast, or rolls with delicious parquet margarine. Parquet is tops in food energy value, and you'll say it's tops in taste, too. Parquet's fresh, delicate flavor is welcomed every day in millions of American homes. And 
In fact, millions of families prefer parquet margarine to any other brand. And remember, parquet is a vitamin-fortified spread. Every single pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So be sure to buy this energy-packed spread that tastes so good. Ask for Kraft's Parquet Margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. You're Don Tootin, Peavy. Well, anyhow, whether he made it or married it or minted it, he's got money. How do you know, Mr. Gildersleeve? I saw his furniture. Two vans, Chief. You don't say. Yeah. Oil paintings with lights fastened onto the frames. Any, uh... Just landscapes, Floyd. Oh. <laughs> and old masters, I imagine. Most likely. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, if you play your cards right, he might ask you over for tea. You can wave your pinky and discuss the stock market. <laughs> I'll stick to Coke. How about a Coke for you, Commissioner? Not just yet, thank you. If I were you, Floyd, I wouldn't make fun of people I don't know. Remember, it's no crime to be a millionaire. No crime to be a burglar unless they catch you. <laughs> well, I don't want to knock your friend. Any friend of yours is a friend of mine, Commissioner. Oh, is that so? That sounds fair enough, Mr. Gildersleeve. What I was saying before, I got a friend I'd like to bring into the club. You know Harry Dean? Harry Dean? No. Who's he? Well, he's a businessman, a friend of mine. Plays a fair game of poker, and he's a good baritone. Plays the guitar a little. Pleasant the fellas you'd want to meet. Well, let's declare him in. Now, wait a minute. Anybody else know this man? Do you know him, Judge? Never met him. Peavy? I never had the pleasure. Chief? Sure, I know him. I had to close his place up once. Ah, oh, Chief. <laughs> Quiet, Floyd. What kind of a place does he run? That pool room down on State Street. It's a billiard parlor. It's all the same. If the chief has had to close him up, we don't want him. Oh, now, Commissioner, let's not be narrow-minded. What was the complaint, Chief? Selling cigarettes to miners, but we couldn't prove anything. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. He don't do it now. He won't even sell them to me. <laughs> well, I say we don't want a man in this club that runs a pool hall and sells cigarettes to kids. I guess that settles it, Floyd. Why does it? That's the way clubs are run, Floyd. One black ball. Stop saying that. Now, Floyd, let's not get squabbling amongst ourselves. Who's squabbling? I only want to bring a friend into the club, and all of a sudden he ain't good enough for Mr. Gildersleeve. He's good enough for you, ain't he, Chief? Oh, Harry's all right. Chief, you arrested him. Well, if I was the high hat, all the people I ever arrested, I'd get pretty lonesome. That's a spirit, Chief. Live and let live. How about you, Judge? Where do you stand? Well, I'm inclined to think Mr. Dean would be uh, undesirable, Floyd. Yeah, that's the stuff, Judge. Remember, Floyd, we might be wanting to ask Rumpton Buller to join this club. We couldn't ask him if we had a jailbird up here. He's not a jailbird. I bet he's got a lot cleaner record than this millionaire if anybody knew the fact. I'll thank you not to insult my friends, Floyd. You're insulting mine. I am not. I only said he wasn't fit to be a member of this club. Well, that's an insult if I ever heard one. Now, Floyd. And if Harry you? can't join the club, you fellas can go find yourselves another meeting place, that's all. Oh, Floyd, for heaven's sake. You're being unreasonable, Floyd. Maybe I am, but that's final. Let in Harry Dean or go find another spot with the features you got here. Running water, lights, telephones, pianos. Yeah, makes a nice club, all right. <laughs> well, I know where we can get a club room that'll make this one look like 30 cents. Where? I just remembered. There's a big room over Rumson Bullard's garage. Twice as big a room as this. You think he'd let us use it? Well, if I go to him as a friend and a neighbor and ask him to be a member, how can he refuse? Go ahead. Well, as I don't like to see you. What else can we do, Chief? Floyd's being pig-headed. Look who's talking. <laughs> Come on, fellas. Let's go over and see Bullard right away. He'd probably be tickled to death to furnish the room, especially for us. Put in a nice box, a real card table. And a piano that doesn't sound like a dishpan. Yeah. Well, who's with me? I am. Chief? Can't we patch this up, Mr. Gildersleeve? If Floyd will abide by the Constitution, one black ball keeps a man out. We haven't any Constitution, and you can get yourselves another hall. You heard him, Chief. Are you with me? Uh, no, I think I'll stay here, Mr. Gildersleeve. Peavy, are you with me or with Floyd? Yeah, who are you with, Peavy? Uh, not voting. I, I ought to be getting home to Mrs. Peavy anyway. It's only 8 o'clock. I know, but if I'm not where she thinks I am, she gets nervous. <laughs> well, come on, Judge. Come on, Peavy. Stick around, Peavy. I've really got to go, Floyd. But I'm not going with Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm just going at the same time. <laughs> the van. They're still unloading. I don't see any signs of Bullard. He may be on the other side of the van or in the house. Well, I'll be running along, gentlemen. Good luck, Mr. Jones, please. You might as well wait a minute to see what he says, Peavy. Then maybe we can go up and see the room. Well, there I... he is now, Gildy. Standing there in the door, talking to the moving man. By George. Big fellow, isn't he? Must be 
You're over six feet. Fine-looking man. Distinguished-looking. Well, you fellas wait here, and I'll go and introduce myself. Well, you, don't you want me to go with you? I am his neighbor, Judge. He doesn't want the whole town piling in on him all at once. But after it's all settled, why, naturally, I'll introduce you and Pete. All right. Uh, you got a comb, Horace? No, I haven't, I'm sorry. Yeah, just keep your hat on with you, young thing. Yeah, I guess so. Of course, he might ask me to come in. Oh, well, if he's as nice a fellow as I think he is, he'd be willing to overlook a few details. Well, sure he will. Yeah, sure. Well, here I go. Why do you want this table, Mr. Bullard? Well, that goes in the front bedroom upstairs. Yes, sir. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Bullard. Uh, who? Oh, what is it? Does this chair go the same place as the table? No, no, no. Let's see. Uh, that one goes in the living room. Yes, sir. One side, mister. Oh, look where you're going. Uh, <laughs> Moving men. Were you looking for me? Well, yes. I wanted to introduce myself. My name's Gildersleeve, Brockmorton P. Yeah? I'm the water commissioner here in Summerfield. Oh, I see. Well, uh, I expect to subscribe for the water in due time, Mr. Gildersleeve. It won't be necessary to sell me. Uh, oh, huh? I'm not here on business, Mr. Bullard. Oh, you're not? Well, I'm rather busy, as you can see, so if you'll excuse me, I'm I... your neighbor across the street. I just came over to say hello. Oh, um, well, how are you? I guess we're ready for the piano now, Mr. Bullard. Yes, well, be careful. But if you drop that, it'll kill you. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> like to have you try my piano sometime, Mr. Bullard. It's a uh, Wembley. Oh, is that so? Yes, sir. Oh, one side, mister. Oh. We take the legs first. The living room? That's right. What I wanted to ask you, Mr. Bullard, uh, we have a little club here in this town, just a few of us, the Jolly Boys Social Club. Oh, uh, that's so? Hey, you want it over by the window? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Uh, Gildersleeve. Uh, Brockmorton P. Just uh, put it along the wall. Which wall? The one with it. Oh, wait, I'll come up and show you. Well, about this club, Mr. Bullard, we thought that being new to the city, or rather, just having returned... Mr. Gildersleeve, I wonder if we couldn't talk about this some other time. I'm trying to get this van unloaded. It'll only take a minute, Mr. Bullard. You see, we need a club room. Some other time, please. It'll only take a minute. I don't care. These movers are getting $17.77 an hour. See me next week. Or next year. Oh! Money grubber. No wonder he's a millionaire. Down by the old mill stream, where I find... No, 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 Chief. It's no good. Tenor and a bass just ain't a quartet, that's all. No, I guess not. Yeah, want to play a little card? Poker's no good with two people. You ever play casino? No, played with the wife every once in a while. Yeah, it's that kind of a game. (laughs) Well, we can have another Coke anyway. Yeah, let's do that. Uh huh. You who? Are there any jolly boys up there? Kill the sleeve. Oh, wonder what the fat slob wants now. (laughs) What do you want? I want to apologize. I'll be done. Well, now ain't that nice. I want to apologize too, Floyd. Judge Hooker and Peavy. Thought you were going home, Peave. I'm still on my way. <laughs> Go ahead, Gildy. Say it. Huh? Oh. <clears throat> well, Floyd, just want to say that I'm sorry we walked out on you. I'm sorry I opposed your friend, Mr. Dean. And uh, I'm sorry I ever mentioned Mr. Duller, uh, Bullard. It's okay, Commissioner. Have a coat. I want to echo everything my friend Mr. Gildersleeve has said, Lloyd. It's okay. Have a coat. Yeah, yeah, let's all have one. Come on, Phoebe. Well, just one for the road, as they say. Wait a minute. Uh, Before we drink it, it's understood that Floyd's friend, Harry Dean, is unanimously elected to the membership in our club. That's right. Oh, now, fellas, uh, I've been thinking about that, and uh, I was wrong. Club shouldn't have anybody in that the other members don't know. Oh, Floyd, I insist. I insist. We all insist. Then I'll blackball him. You're... Well, he takes one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by George, you're all right, Floyd. <laughs> a jolly boy through and through. Well, here's to Floyd. For he's a jolly good fellow. For I'm a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow.
Bertie, you still up? Yes, sir. Mr. Bullard was over here a little while ago. He seemed real nice. Mr. Bullard? And what did he want? He wanted to borrow some candles. No electricity over there. Candles? Some nerve. He asked me if I knew where he could get a good cook, and uh, Why, uh, he let's... said he'd be willing to pay a pretty good money. Oh, he did, eh? Listen, Bertie, I want to tell you something mighty important. I've made this the guiding principle of my whole life. What's that? Money is not everything. Oh. And don't think I've forgotten about papering your room, either. Uh, yes, uh, uh, when? Well, we'll see about it. Good night, Bertie. Good night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Music on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. This is Ken Carpenter, speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. something special for the children. We mean those very special treats you make with Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food. Pabstet is nourishing, easily digested, and you can serve it in a hundred or more tempting ways. Children like Pabstet melted into a smooth, luscious sauce, drenching macaroni, vegetables, eggs, or fish with mellow cheddar cheese goodness. Dates or prunes stuffed with Pabstet make grand appetizing salads. And for a delightful after-school snack, you're sure to satisfy hungry appetites when you serve Graham cracker treats spread with Pabstet. Remember, Pabstet is wholesome and nourishing. It's a splendid energy food, rich in milk protein and milk minerals, contains vitamin A and another important vitamin called riboflavin. Treat the whole family to Pabstet. Don't forget, it's a good bet for all occasions, so buy delicious, nourishing Pabstet cheese food. This is the National Broadcast.